we stay on developing countries. It's a historic first for the Philippines. Fitch Ratings giving the country the first ever investment grade rating. That upgrade gives greater access to low cost loans. Fitch raised the Philippines' long term foreign currency debt to triple B minus. The local currency also got a boost as well. The agency cites the country's strong trade balance numbers and the current account surplus for the upgrade. They also praise the country on reforms in fiscal management and also in raising taxes. And for more on this story and the Philippines in the surprising economy of late, Ryan Hakim joins us from New York. He's an economist with Cascade Asia Advisors. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, on this particular topic, this upgrade is significant, but for our viewers around the world, help them understand why is it important that it was upgraded to investment grade status? Um, well, actually, in terms of the, uh, for the Philippines, we actually we've actually been expecting this for a long time, and I think the markets actually understand that as well. And um, I think you can look at this uh, from two things. One is the yield, which has already been falling, and if you look at the credit default swap spread, um, that's also been trading quite tight compared to other investment grade countries already. So I think for the immediate term, nothing is really going to change. I think maybe after the elections in May, uh, you'll start to see. Uh, um, those effects materialize for in terms of so, borrowing costs. So what you're saying is the economy has already gotten better. Investors already know that. Uh, yeah, you I, think, expected, I think the market's already You realized. expected this rating. But how is the economy in the Philippines? You cover that sector quite closely. I, I, is it an economy that needs more assistance to drive it further, or is it self-sustaining at this point? Um, well, I think... If you look at the market, uh, the Philippine Stock Exchange, for example, that's been the best, one of the best performing in the world. I think one of the uh, drawbacks in the Philippines for investors is the political situation. And I think that's why maybe the S&P and uh, Moody's will probably hold off until sometime after the May elections uh, to upgrade the Philippines. And I think it's because of the traditional bottlenecks that you've always had uh, for investment, uh, especially with dispute uh, resolution and with royalties. I think in terms of FDI, um, investors are still quite wary. But if you look at portfolio inflows in the country, I think everyone's already uh, realizing that the fundamentals in the country are actually quite strong. You mentioned this earlier. The stock market there is doing well. It's getting upgraded yeah. by Fitch. Yes, there's concerns about the politics side of it. But investors like yourself, why are they so attracted to the Philippines? I mean, there's plenty of choices in Asia. Right. I, well, one is the one is the, the uh, market, the stock exchange. Uh, two is the uh, interest rate differential is still quite attractive um, compared to other countries, uh, other emerging markets. And uh, for the Philippines, I think they're going to keep rates on hold for the rest of the year. And so I think investors still look at it, look at the Philippines as a place where they can get um, pretty good returns uh, for their portfolio investments. Okay, so let's take a step back. We've been fairly positive on the Philippines. What are some things that perhaps could derail growth, maybe not just in the Philippines, but throughout Southeast Asia? I mean, there's some significant issues happening around the world, although they're far from the Philippines. Could they perhaps have a macro impact? Yeah, I think for Fitch, I think one of the um, assumptions that they had was there, there was going to be no uh, external impact to the Philippines. Um, and, you know, speaking of like things like the Eurozone, but I think for the Philippines relative to other Southeast Asian countries, it's, it's actually quite insulated. Uh, there's a lot of exposures to the U.S., um, but not so much to China, or where you might be experiencing some, some slowdowns. So I think in terms of the external macro environment, I think the Philippines is still quite strong. It is, I'm just curious, is the Chinese economy at all related to what's happening in the Philippines? Does the Philippine economy benefit? Um, well, uh, what I'm saying is the linkage is not as strong as for example, Indonesia, which has a lot of commodity linkages to uh, China. Uh, so I think the Philippines is actually quite insulated from that um, part of Asia. All right. Ryan Hakim, thank you very much for your time on you. the Philippines being upgraded by Fitch.